Chapter 1 Tom Comes Home The clouds appeared, but went away again. It seemed they did not even try to make rain. The surface of the earth had formed a dry, hard layer. The dirt layer broke and the dust formed. Every moving thing, a walking man, a wagon, a car, lifted the dust into the air. People stayed in their houses and they tied cloth over their noses and wore glasses to protect their eyes when they went out. A great red truck stood in front of a little roadside diner. Inside, the truck driver sat on a chair and rested his elbows on the counter and looked over his coffee at the lean and lonely waitress. Outside, a man who was walking along the highway crossed over and approached the truck. He stopped in front of it and read the no rider sign on the windshield. The man outside was close to 30. His eyes were dark brown and his cheeks were high and wide. He wore a new gray suit, but it was cheap. His gray cap was so new that it was still stiff. In the diner, the truck driver paid his bill. He was a heavy red-faced man with broad shoulders and a thick stomach. He stepped outside and walked to the big red truck. The man in the cheap gray suit asked, Could you give me a lift, sir? Didn't you see the no rider sign on the windshield? I sure did, but my feet are really tired. New shoes, the truck driver said, looking down at them. You shouldn't walk in new shoes in hot weather. I don't have any other shoes, the hitchhiker said. Well, okay then, thanks. The hitchhiker opened the door and slid into the seat. The driver looked at him carefully, then started the engine. Are you going far? The driver asked. Number looking for a job? No, my pa's got a place. He's a tenant farmer and we've been there a long time. A tenant farmer and he's still here? Of course, I ain't heard lately. The driver then asked, Have you been at a job? I sure have, the hitchhiker said. I thought so. I see your hands. They look like they've been swinging a hammer. Would you like to know anything else? I'll tell you. My name's Tom Jode. My pa is old Tom Jode. And you know where I just came from, don't you? Now don't get angry. That ain't my business, the driver said nervously. Well, I'll tell you. Yeah, I was in prison. It ain't my business, the driver said weakly. See that road up ahead, Tom asked? Yeah. Well, I get off there. Soon the truck stopped. Tom thanked the driver and the truck went off. Tom took off his coat and then his shoes. He wrapped the shoes in the coat and placed them under his arm. At last, he walked up the side road through the fields with a cloud of dust following behind him. Then he saw a man sitting under a tree. The man wore old jeans and a blue shirt. His shoes, gray with dust, lay on the ground in front of him. Tom stopped in the shade and wiped his face with his cap. Hi, it's hotter than hell out here. The seated man stared at Tom. Now, ain't you young Tom Jode? Yeah, going home now. You probably don't remember me, the man said. I was the preacher, Reverend Jim Casey. Just Jim Casey now. Sure, I remember you, Tom said. You used to give a good service. Well, I ain't preaching now. The spirit ain't in people. Worse than that, the spirit ain't in me, he said sadly. It's a funny thing. But I was just thinking about old Tom Jode when you came along. I was thinking I should visit him. How is your old pa? I don't know how he is. I ain't been home in four years. Didn't he write to you? Tom was embarrassed. Well, pa never did write letters. He could write his name all right. But he never wrote letters to people. So, have you been traveling around? Casey asked. Tom looked strangely at Casey. Didn't you hear about me? It was in all the papers. Number. What happened? Tom said pleasantly. 
Well, he paused for a moment and then said, I've been in McAllister for four years. I won't ask you any questions if you've done something bad. I'd do it again, Tom said. I killed a guy in a fight. We were drunk at a dance. He put a knife in me, so I killed him with a shovel. I got seven years for that. I got out in four. I'm out on parole. So you ain't heard anything about your family in four years. Just a couple of Christmas cards from Ma and Grandma. Your pa's house is about a mile from here. Let's go, Casey said as he got up from under the tree. The two men hesitated on the edge of the shade, then walked out into the yellow sunlight. The path led them through fields of dusty green cotton. The sun was lower in the sky when Tom pointed to a fence and said, There's our line. They moved over the top of a hill and saw the Jode placed below them. Tom stopped. It ain't the same, he said. Look at that house. Something happened. There ain't anyone there. The Reverend Casey and young Tom stood on the hill and stared down at the small unpainted house. Casey said, Let's look in the house. It's all pushed out of shape. If I was still a preacher, I'd say the arm of God had struck. But now I don't know what happened. They walked down to the front of the house and Tom said, They're gone or Ma's dead. He pointed to the low gate across the front door. If Ma was anywhere near, the gate would be shut and hooked. The sun had lowered until it shone through the windows and it flashed on the edges of the broken glass. Tom Joe turned at last and crossed the porch. He rolled a cigarette, smoothed it, and lighted it. He breathed in deeply and blew the smoke out through his nose. Something's wrong, he said. The preacher stared across the fields. Somebody's coming. Look, I can't see him because of the dust he's raising. Who is that? The man came closer, and as he walked past the barn, Tom said, Oh, I know him. You know him, Casey. That's Muley Graves. Then he called out, Hey, Muley, how are you? The man stopped, and then he walked quickly. He was a lean man, fairly short. His movements were nervous and quick. He wore blue jeans that were thin at the knee and seat, and an old black suit coat that was spotted with dirt. Who's that? The man called. Muley came very close before he recognized the faces. Well, he said, it's Tommy Jode. When did you get out, Tommy? Two days ago, said Tom. It took a little time to hitchhike home. And look what I find. Where are my folks, Muley? And why is the house destroyed? By God, it's lucky that I came by, said Muley. Yeah, old Tom was worried about you coming home and finding nobody. But where are my folks? Tom asked nervously. Well, it took three trips with your Uncle John's wagon. They're all at your Uncle John's, Muley said. Oh, all at John's. Well, what are they doing there? They've been picking cotton, all of them, even the kids and your grandpa. They're getting money together so they can go out west. They're going to buy a car and go out west where it's easy living. There's nothing here, Tom asked. They ain't gone yet? No, Muley said. But the last I heard was four days ago. Okay, said Tom. You know the preacher here, Reverend Casey. Sure, sure, Muley said. Glad to see you again, he said to Casey. The two men shook hands. Where have you been these days, he asked. I've been away asking questions, said Casey. But what happened here? Why did they force folks off the land? The dust came up and spoiled everything. And the folks who owned the land said, We can't afford to keep tenants. So they came with tractors and pushed all the tenants off the land. All except me. A large red drop of sun fell over the horizon and was gone. Tom said, 
Well, we ain't going to walk eight miles to Uncle John's place tonight. My feet are sore. Can we go to your place, Muley? It's only about a half mile away. Muley seemed embarrassed. My wife and kids and her brother all left and went to California. There wasn't anything to eat here. And you didn't go? Casey asked. Why didn't you stay with your family? Muley said, I couldn't go. Something wouldn't let me. Well, I'm hungry, said Tom. Do you have anything to eat, Muley? How have you been getting your dinner? Muley said, looking ashamed. At first I ate mice. I had to. But now I've made traps and I catch rabbits and wild chickens. He reached into his sack and three dead rabbits came falling out. Well, it's more than four years since I ate fresh killed meat, said Tom. He rubbed his hands together. Who's got a knife? Muley gave Tom his pocket knife and Tom prepared the rabbits. They made a fire from some broken wood from the house. Then Tom put the pieces of meat on a wire that they found in the barn and turned them over the fire. After the three men finished eating, the preacher stood up and said slowly, Yeah, I'm going with you, Tom. And when your folks are out on the road, I'll go with them. You're welcome, said Tom. Do you think you'll come along, Muley? What? No, I'm not going anywhere, Muley said. He was staring out ahead. Do you see that beam of light moving over there? That's probably the man in charge of this piece of land. Somebody saw our fire. Tom looked. A beam of light was coming from over the hill. But we ain't doing anything. We're just sitting here. Muley laughed. Yeah, we're doing something just being here. We're trespassing. We can't stay. They've been trying to catch me for two months. What's wrong with you, Muley? Tom asked. You never were the type of person to run and hide. Yeah, but when someone hunts you, that's different. Something happens to you. You ain't strong then. You'll see. You just sit here and the car will come. Maybe it'll be Willie. He's a sheriff now, and if you upset him, he'll beat you and send you back to McAllister. Well, I don't want that, Tom said, but I hate getting pushed around. He has a gun, said Muley. The strong lights beamed into the sky now, and they could hear an approaching vehicle. Come on, Tom. Come on. Casey Muley waved the two other men out into the cotton field. The car came up to the house. Get down, Muley said. Tom and Casey put their heads down. They're putting out our fire, Muley whispered, kicking dust over it. The headlights swung over the field where the men were hiding. They dropped their heads lower. Soon the lights were gone, and the car could be heard driving away. The three men quietly got up and crossed the field to a wooded area where Tom looked for a cave that he dug years ago. Muley said, oh, yeah, I know the cave you're looking for. I covered it with a dying bush so nobody could find it. Muley then walked a few steps and uncovered the cave. I like it in here. I feel like nobody can get me. We need to get some sleep, Tom said. We can start for Uncle John's in the morning. <laughs>